Hey guys, Chris from Hockey Tutorial here, and today in this video, I wanted to show you around our office or our HQ, give you a little insight into where we work, some of the things that you don't typically see us getting up to in front of the camera, and just show you around the place a little bit. So uh, follow me, and let's take a look. So I think the best way to show you around is we'll start on this side of the room. This is technically the right side or my left, depending on which side you're interpreting it from. We'll work our way around and I'll just give you a bit of insight into what we have in here, why, and just give you a bit of insight. So this over here is a table or desk or workstation. I don't know what you want to refer to it that I'm really proud of. This was actually be built by our camera operator, Ricky. I wanted a desk that was big enough to be able to put skate sharpeners on. It needed to be really solid and we couldn't find one that was this dimensions that had as much storage as this thing has. So we had one made. The funny thing about this is that it was built inside this room and we can't actually fit it out the door. So if we ever leave this space, this either has to be cut in half or left here. I thought that was kind of cool. But on the table, we've got some um, music equipment for our sound engineer and also our beat producer, Michael, who creates a lot of the beats that you hear inside our videos. Over here, I've got the ProSharp Home, which is a skate sharpener. Next to it, I've got the infamous Sparks. We use both of these machines for different things. Of course, that one's super portable. This one is kind of portable, but it's really heavy. So we just use them for different things. When we're traveling, we typically take that one. And quick shout out to Jeff McGinner from Kenya. If you see this picture in the background, that is PK Subban when he played for the um, Habs back in the day. And Jeff painted this while I was in Kenya filming a day in the life of a hockey uh, player from Kenya. If you've seen that video, I'll link it down below in the video description. But of course, it's a really sentimental piece. We're technically borrowing this picture right now and it will be returned back to Jeff in Kenya the next time I'm there. But it's been really nice to have it hanging in the office for all this time. Some of the other things that we've got on the table here is just a ton of runners, bionic, step. Um, typically we have a lot of bionic runners, but this is just kind of like the space for blades or runners that we're testing or just blades or runners that we use for ourselves as well as our very trusty D3O kit, which we're gonna be doing some fun stuff with in an upcoming video. Last thing I've got to mention over here is over here is the Hockey News publication, which if you don't know, it's the largest hockey publication in the world. And when they featured PK Subban on the front cover, I was actually featured inside and it was um, very, very early on. I think at the time I had something like 10 or 15,000 subscribers, but it was awesome to get a shout out from the Hockey News, which at that point was one of the biggest things that ever happened to Hockey Tutorial. So as we go around, we've got our meeting desk over here. And if you look in the corner down there, we have essentially all of the skates that I've had used or made videos of recently. Some of them are really, really old pairs of skates. This is my son's first pair of skates, but I have a really hard time getting rid of skates. I don't like to get rid of them. I like to keep them. Of course, they're sentimental, so they just kind of live over there. But this table over here is where we take a lot of our meetings for any of the people that we've had visit our office, like uh, Russell, the CEO of Sparks, and also the CEO, Olaf, of uh, ProSharp, who have both been to this place, as well as a lot of other people as well. And this is also going to be doubling up as our podcasting space, so hang tight for that. And uh, a quick side note, on the wall over there is a pair of CCM E8s, which were the actual first pair of hockey skates that I ever got. I, again, never able to get rid of them. Big sentimental value. They were originally pl plastered on the wall somewhere in the back, but when we moved things around, I stuck them on the shelf there. And that bronze helmet in the corner was a gift from Zeal in Providence, Rhode Island. They were just uh, having some fun customizing bits of hockey equipment, changing the colors of different things, creating things that were a bit louder and a bit more flary, which I thought was cool. So they were nice enough to gift me with that helmet, which I've had ever since. As we work our way around, this is Studio One, where we film probably a lot of the videos that you guys have seen. Anytime you see what we refer to as A-roll or I like to refer to it as flappy head segments where I'm talking to the camera, black background, this is where all of that stuff is shot. 
There's obviously a table over here as well for us to be able to get product shots, but the idea behind this set over here is that it's set up for talking segments and we don't move anything that's here. The lighting is set up perfectly, uh, the camera itself, a monitor and audio as well so I can see what's going on. And this is where all of those segments happen. Typically we used to have to deconstruct this whole setup and then change it so we could film product shots, but we've got another studio for that now. It just helps the workflow, keeps things moving smoothly and it allows us to put out content much quicker than we normally would because the setup of the cameras and the lights and the audio takes up so much time. So that's where most of the magic happens. And of course, this is my travel camera bag that comes with me to every trip that we take, like when we're in Austria with Red Bull or in the US with the guys from Wraparound. That's the bag I typically take with me. Now, over here is kind of like our lounge area. This is where we chill out, where we relax, where we have lunch, sometimes breakfast as well. You can see the Cheerios in the corner. Um, Ignore the bottles that are there. It's not alcohol, it's orange juice in case anyone is wondering. But this is where we uh, spend a lot of our time relaxing, just either watching TV, just unwinding, or even just brainstorming for new ideas. And of course we have a coffee machine there because I never used to drink coffee, but ever since I've been introduced to it, good coffee, I can't stop drinking it. So that helps as well. And in the corner, all of the boxes with all of the gear that we've ever bought that's work related. I do that because if we ever need to have something replaced or, you know, for like insurance purposes, or if we decide that we want to sell a piece of gear and get something else, having the box always helps. So that's why all of that stuff is stacked in the corner. Now over here is my desk. This is where I do the majority of my editing. Um, of course, we've got the hockey tutorial logo in the back. It's our old logo. I've never bothered to update it with the new one that we use now, which is, I was going to look at my shirt over here, but I don't have a shirt on that shirt over there. I've not updated the logo, but you get the idea. It's the HT office, so that's always nice. But this is where I do the majority of my editing. Um, and in the background of there, I've also got a couple of sentimental sticks. The first one is from Zeal, who made the first ever custom hockey tutorial stick. We actually broke the blade. Um, it doesn't look like the blade's broken, but I promise you it's broken. Otherwise, I wouldn't have put a nail through the stick and put it on the wall. And this over here is also from Zeal. It's a stick that we graffitied while I was in uh, Providence, Rhode Island with the team at Zeal. I don't think they actually make sticks anymore, which is a bit of a shame, but I've always kept uh, these two sticks because they were really sentimental. And when we were out there with them, I had a really great time. And the last one over here is the Save Pond Hockey Stick from Palmer Hockey, who are the guys that were behind the Titan Hockey Sticks that Wayne Gretzky used. So of course that's sentimental because Save Pond Hockey is a massive movement that we're a big believer of. And of course we're gonna be dropping some content about the changes in our environment and what that is doing to the life of pond hockey that's going to be coming this winter so i'm looking forward to sharing that video as well but yeah this is essentially where the magic happens when i'm making videos i've got something on the screen right now that i was editing earlier on i'm pretty sure this video is actually already live but yep this is my desk and where i get up to uh, all of the videos that you see us produce if i'm the one that's edited them over here we've just got some stuff i store Pacific Ring Pond Pack, which I always use during the pond hockey season. This isn't even a plug. These bags are just epic for pond hockey. They're built specifically for that, which is great. And this is just some gear that's been retired, like an old drone, um, some old gimbals, some lenses. This is stuff that we don't typically use. Uh, like these are the actual first cameras that I used to make the first hockey tutorial videos, which is uh, really funny that this is what essentially started everything. It's nice that I've still got the original one. I never was able to get rid of that because it's, for me, I'm a big sentimental guy, I can't help it. Uh, we've just got some extra mics here, extra drone batteries, just stuff that we need on a day-to-day -day basis. And over here is clearly something that maybe a lot of you don't know about, but aside from hockey, massive advocate for electric skateboards or electric longboards. Boost It was one of the ones that I really loved and now I've moved on to Evolve. Really love these things. Got a bunch of other ones like X-Way, Slick Revolutions. I actually have a second channel that I know some of you have somehow stumbled upon. I've never ever announced it on Hockey Tutorial, but I do have a second YouTube channel about electric skateboards. I'll link it down below if you're curious, but this is definitely a really, really big hobby of mine. If it's not hockey and it's not creating content, then it's definitely gonna be out on these things. Over here is the desk of Ricky, which is our camera operator and the guy behind the camera right now. This is where he edits all of the stuff that he's been shooting and creating for us. So if you're wondering what goes on here, that's what goes on there. And over here, this is a shelf that has just random accessories that a lot of people need uh, when they come to visit us, whether it be stick grips, uh, whether it be uh, some laces for their skates, mouth guards. This is kind of like a little supply center that we set up. So anyone that visits the office that needs to grab a couple things can just stop by and grab whatever they need. Of course, our synthetic ring will come to that shortly. Glass cabinet over here to keep a couple of um, 
not really sentimental things, but stuff that we're either working on and it isn't ready to be used. I've also got my YouTube plaque in here, which is really awesome to be able to have that, but I've got a pair of custom skates from True, custom skates from CCM, and soon there'll be a custom set of skates in here from Bauer. Hopefully that gives you an idea of what video we're gonna be working on very shortly. But yeah, this is just where we keep some stuff that we don't want to get messed up or damaged or scratched because we've not finished creating content with it just yet. Bit of entertainment for the office. We've got the uh, Super Deka down here. Anyone that comes down, whether they're a hockey player or not, it's just a really good really good thing to be able to just jump on with and have some fun with. Kill some time or even just a bit of challenging stick handling, it's always good. And lastly over here, this is Studio 2. This is where we film our B-roll. It doesn't look very different to the previous studio, but this desk is massive. In comparison to that one that you saw previously at Studio One, this is essentially more than double the size. So it means that regardless of what we're putting on here, if it's a full hockey bag, if it be a goalie bag or a player bag, it will fit perfectly on here and we're able to get good shots of it without having to adjust the first set that you saw. So it's really nice to have one place to do talking segments and then a separate place to be able to film anything that is product based. So we can set the products down here. Um, we always keep a scale because we have to weigh products. You always hear us talking about the weight of different things. It's nice to be able to check that kind of stuff from here, but that's where that all goes down. But if I just lie here, you can see for reference, this table is massive. Again, this is custom made for what we need and we're actually able to switch out the surfaces on the top. So if we're filming a product that's white, we can replace the surface with a black surface, green, red, same with the other one over there. So we can adapt it to fit whatever it is that we're filming at the time. And in the corner there, more skateboards. This is where some of the deliveries that we come, uh, that we have sent to our office get dropped off by the reception downstairs, which is always nice. It's one of the reasons that I was really keen to get this space because there is a reception. So even if we're not here, there'll be somebody to be able to take in deliveries and drop stuff off in the office, which is great. Uh, this desk or this unit over here, rather, wall unit is just for storage. We keep tools in there, merchandise that we use ourselves as well, as well as jerseys and just other things that you'd expect us to need while we're making videos, as well as a printer, which we actually do need when we're shipping stuff out on occasions. And over here, we've got an extra TV and an Xbox over there so we can play NHL, Call of Duty. I'm not going to lie and say I play a lot of NHL. I'm definitely more of a Call of Duty type of uh, gamer when I ever do get the chance to play. Uh, but this is where that goes down as well. So it's nice to just be able to have a good amount of space to make the magic happen as it were. But from here, we'll go check out the rink and uh, give you a little bit of information on what goes down there. Now this is our synthetic rink. If you're wondering which synthetic surface we have, it's the extra ice synthetic. Uh, we made a bunch of videos on it. I'll link them down below in the video description. I'm not sure if we're ever gonna be changing this, but there's a massive possibility that we may switch it out. I'm not gonna say which company that we might be switching it for just yet, but food for thought. So over here, we've got a, all of the sticks that we're kind of messing around with right now. A lot of them are, are you, you can pretty much see which ones are used. It's effectively, any of the sticks from here to here are used. Any of the sticks from there to there are all brand new. They do get switched over very, very frequently as new sticks get released. But this space just allows us to not only have fun, I'm not gonna lie and say all we do is create content here because we have fun in here. That's the main purpose of this. It's, I think, important for a hockey office to have somewhere that you can shoot pucks and skate. So that's why we were lucky enough and fortunate enough to be able to get this space. But it goes without saying that I never ever thought I'd be able to set something up like this and I don't take it for granted, I really do appreciate it, but we do work hard to make sure that we're able to sustain everything that we have over here. But it's always changing and it's one of the reasons I never wanted to film a tour because the space is always being adapted and changed, but maybe we'll do another one in a year so you can see where the space has gone to and what we've done with it in that time frame. But yeah, this is where we come, we test out things like grips, sticks, just get some basic ideas of what they feel like before we take them onto proper ice. But it's nice to be able to you know, lace up some skates, grab some gloves, grab a stick and shoot some pucks at the goal. A quick mention about the goal that we have is the Winwell Heavy Duty Goal. This net is over two years old it's taken well over 50,000 shots. I'd probably say maybe even close to 100,000 shots, maybe more from anywhere from recreational players to pro players. This thing is seriously marked, but it doesn't have a single dent on it. It's definitely worth mentioning because if you're looking for a goal that's gonna last, Winwell heavy duty net, easily one of the best nets I've ever come across. So I've not been disappointed with this. It's nice, heavy, sturdy, and it's lasted in here, which has been great. But if you look around, we were able to paint some of the walls, essentially all of the walls that were easy enough to paint to make it look like a rink. It's something that I just thought would be nice to do so it's just not plain office walls. But I always left the back wall over there because it's exposed brick and I thought that always looked kind of cool. And I also managed to put a puck through the window over there. I can't really explain what the hell I was doing because the net is on that side, but that was all me. I will fix it. It's just uh, one of the hazards of having a 
hockey rink inside a, an office. As always guys, a big thank you for watching this. Hopefully this gives you a little bit of a deeper insight into what our space looks like, what we do here, how the magic is made or rather where it's made. But if you wanna see more videos like this, make sure you thumbs up and subscribe so you can stay up to date with everything that we post. A big thank you for watching the video all the way to the end. Make sure you check out the links down below in the video description so you can see some of the other videos that we shot. And I will catch you in the next one. Take care guys, peace.